Hello all, how are we doing? Um, we're expecting a, a few more to join us. So um, thanks very much for, for jumping on, on board this webinar. We will keep it nice and short. And the good thing is this is actually limited, this webinar. So we put a little bit of restriction on it because we wanted to interact a little bit more. So even as we're waiting there, if anybody wants to put in the chat box, maybe what school they're with and potentially what they want to get from the webinar, and then I can cover a lot more of that during the session. So um, quite an inclusive little webinar there. So if you just in the chat box, maybe what you want to get from today's lesson would be a, a big one. I think we're waiting on just a few more potentially to come on. So if you want to see if the chat box is working there, you can let me know even um, what you want to get from today's webinar or specific areas to focus or questions to, to cover. So I have a presentation done here to go through, which is going to be quite general over everything. But if there's some specific, I can really home in and focus on that as I go through. So anybody, any any you want to put in the chat or uh, the q a it's totally up to you you can go for that let me know what you'd like to get from today's session so let us know there on that and we will get started then so just as you're doing that guys we just want to game put in the chat don't be afraid we're we're all here to help and support each other so if you can do that um brilliant so See progression in athletics and gymnastics. Um, I will show you that actually. I'm I'm a on the desktop here and can't get the headset on. Oh, perfect. Yes, how are you? Well, Sandra's on as well through. Um, yes, composite classes always um a challenging one, but something that that I will try and address too. And I haven't actually got this on schedule in the webinar, but that always is is a a challenging one too for for P and how do we. Uh, do that there's there's a principle we use called step and we'll cover that as well then on too um just some new ideas for p5 excellent um i will do that and i'll show you as well to link you into our youtube channel where we have a lot of of stuff on that there i love to see progression through foundation composite classes especially gymnastics excellent what i'll do is i'll show you some um stuff that we have uh, on on our gymnastics overview as well from um some of those simple programs that we have i will look at that guys and i hopefully share it's brilliant this is kind of getting more ideas in my head i will try and find some videos as well too that we have from uh, our gymnastics so so i will share that with you to give you an idea kina as well as what we're talking about so Really quickly, I will go through this and then I will spend a bit more time on um, those different areas and go from here. So literally today, as I say, we're just going to look at a progressive P program. Going to review, you know, where we're currently at, even with the ETI report. But the first question I would like to ask you guys as well, too, and this is why do you deliver um, P? Why do we deliver P in school? So if anybody wants to put in the chat, Box, why do you deliver PE in school? And be honest and open uh, about these answers as well. What is the main benefit for that? So we'll just get one or two answers and then we can we can move along from there. So anybody, why do you deliver PE in school? Um, this is a question I always ask if I'm doing in-person PE training as well, just to see what the answers come back with. Um, it can always be quite fascinating of what we do um number one is i'll see see if any answers come in there but the first and foremost normally number one is um teachers will say because we have to um but there there's a good one yeah so you should be very sensible as well so fun health social to promote healthy bodies brilliant to develop fitness stamina resilience teamwork love all of this and this is where we'll delve in a little bit into um me not so much brilliant yes children do enjoy it and uh, good to get away from online work and it is true as well we can kind of look at PE from from a different perspective but then how do we make that progressive so I will also this is good that you brought these points up about fitness stamina resilience teamwork even especially fitness stamina because there's a difference between PE and physical activity which I'll cover and I think it's important to, for us to to understand that as well too so um Go on to the next one again, YP. It's one of the six areas of learning. It's part of government policies. It's cross, we can bring in a lot of cross-curricular links in with it too. 
It does improve the physical, social, emotional, and academic development to a certain degree because we fire a lot of stuff in the brain from it. But most importantly, it should be fun. Um, it's not going to be everybody. It's not going to be everyone. We need to kind of classify what fun is for children. But again, it can be a brilliant opportunity to make it to make it fun and engaging. So. The ETA report came out. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time in it. In actual fact, we are now in 2004, and this is when they said they are going to come out and review. So I'm not looking forward to that. But essentially, key findings from it were um, minority of schools deliver um, PE at a high standard. Uh, most schools don't have trained or skilled PE specialists. The key strength in learning was expertise of teachers is, is in creating safe, active, and inclusive environment for all, but not many can do this progressive over time and then there has been a reduction in physical activity levels and that leads to a lot of stuff leads to lack of confidence lack of competency and actually delivering uh, fundamental movements like running skipping hopping jumping and how do we counteract that for me the key findings from this was also that teachers do not get the adequate support from NAP so anything I've been in and I've delivered in-person staff training that's been the first bell training they've gotten PE since they've left college. So there'd been no real support or follow-up um, from, from this. Now, what I'm going to really focus on now here is the difference between PE and physical activity in schools. So you may have come across this. This is um, come from Sport NA and Sport Ireland, and this is all over um I all all Ireland um island or island of Ireland kind of physical literacy um statement that we have come up with. So physical literacy is a motivation, confidence, physical competency, knowledge, and understanding that enables a person to value and participate in physical activity throughout life. So the whole idea of this is that we want to help First of all, start with children at that foundation level, have the motivation, confidence, physical competency, and knowledge that they will enable them to value and participate in physical activity throughout life. For me, that is a key attribute and key skill from PE. That's what we want from our PE lessons. And then also we can add in a little bit of a physical activity throughout the day in our school. So these are a few things that we want to keep an eye off. I'm not going to go in too much more into this. If this is something that kind of strikes that you'd like to know more about, please visit the Sport NA or type in Physical Literacy Sport NA, and it will give you a breakdown of all this. But there is an actual class in it itself that um, the course that they run as well too, that you can actually go through that. So that's just, just give you a little bit of understanding of Physical Literacy. But what does it actually mean when we're developing children's skills and physical development? What we need to look at before we even look at progressing or PE programs is where our children are coming in. They're coming into our class from nursery to primary one. And what they need to have is a strong foundation. So in a strong foundation, you call this our perception motor skill development. So these are nine areas. So they include the vestibular awareness, so the ability to spin, tactile, proprioceptive, auditory, visual. So all of these combined together and what how these are developed essentially is through play. So from the ages of zero to four, before even children come to our school, we would hope that they would have a lot of these perception and motor skills de developed. Unfortunately, they don't. So they're coming into our school for a number of reasons they don't because the screen time, uh, busy lifestyles from parents. There's potentially two parents are out of out working all day. It could be a single parent. There's so many factors. So what it falls to us as PE teachers is to bring our sessions back down. How do we develop this? So we can develop it through different models of play, different models of physical activity. So first and foremost, don't be afraid to bring your level of your PE right down through play, through fun, and I'll show you how you can do that through um, a lesson plan. From there, we want to develop our FMS. So that's our fundamental movement skills. Now, this has been key throughout the ages, well, the last number of years, sorry. But there's three areas. Um, there's three areas of the... Um, there's three areas of uh, your fundamental movement skills. So you have locomotion, 
So that's all your movements. So you're running, you're hopping, you're skipping, you're jumping, etc. You have manipulation. So that's all you're throwing, you're using implements. So striking with a tennis racket, a hockey stick, um, kicking with a ball, et cetera, and stabilization. So that's your balance, your twisting, your turning. These are the three key areas for your fundamental movement skills. And within that, there's something like 70 movements within those three areas. So there's a lot there. And again, how you do that is through fun games and play. You may cover all three areas in one game. So for example, a tag game, your tag game, you're bringing in your locomotion. You're starting to run. You may be using an implement for people to catch. It may be a ball. So they may have to throw to tag somebody. They may have to reach to tag somebody. You may then, whenever you get caught, you have to balance for three seconds. So already you have brought in the three main fundamental movement skills. Then you go into your sports specific skills. And this sometimes is where in PE, we maybe don't have the confidence ourselves or the competency to deliver these fun games. So what we do is we throw children straight into a sport. So let's go and play hockey. Let's go and play football. Let's go. But if children haven't developed the foundations, they may struggle with the sport-specific skill. So again, it's just something to bear in mind. So if, we, if they've started off with a strong foundation of play, maybe they haven't got it home. Maybe they have. Fantastic. We maybe need to reevaluate that. So what you're looking at them from there is when they do have that, they increase their confidence. So they love P, they love physical activity because they have these foundations that they find it easy to balance. They find it easy to run, to put one foot in front of the other. They find it easy to catch and implement. So these are a few things they look at. Then they have the competency so they can perform the skill to do that. And what this essentially is, this is physical literacy. So we are making children physically illiterate so that they can actually go throughout the rest of their life being physically active. This is just a little bit about why we exercise. I've done a separate presentation, so I'm not going to go too much, but this is another reason why we add NP in physical activity. What it does straight away, it releases these hormones in our brain. So these are neurotransmitters, so you get an instant hit, okay? So again, I'm not gonna delve too much into this, but there's so much chemical reactions that happen in the brain straight away. From there, what we're going to do is then we have our BDNF. So this is something that's released in the brain. This is a protein that's released in the brain and it's brain, brain derived neurotrophic factor. This is amazing. When we start to work at 60% of our maximum heart rate, so essentially when we're really active, we start to release this protein in our brain. Now it's key in two areas in our brain. So prefrontal cortex, which actually helps you focus, and concentrate, and our hippocampus, which helps with memory. So if we're getting children physically active, either through movement breaks or through PE, we're actually helping them academically because they can focus better and they can store anything that we've taught them a bit longer. Plus as well, it is key, the BDNF is key to nourishing um, brain cells. So it's a called fertilizer for the brain and protecting the, the natural process of, um, brain, of cell, cell death. So if we don't use it, we lose it. But BDNF helps us to, 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 um, to strengthen those brain cells and those connections. What, again, I'm going quickly through this. There is have a whole webinar on this. You can find it on our YouTube channel if this kind of interests you a little bit more. But essentially, this is just a short video of what actually happens in the brain when we are physically active. So just watch how active it is and all the things that are happening in the brain. So in this, these are all our neurons, these are our synapses, these are all our, our connections to each neuron. So once we start moving, once we start interacting, once we start reading and doing all, oh, there's so much activity that happens in our brain, but it's all based through movement. This is what fires everything up when we move. Have you ever found yourself when you're working and you're stationary for a long time, you just lose focus and concentration? Or if you have been out for a run or if you've been in the gym, you're buzzing afterwards you're ready, you can go and do the next thing. You're feeling good about it all. So that, that's just a short insight into what actually happens in the brain. Um, if I move on to the next one here, um, don't think that's going to let me do that. Let me see. Um, let's finish that. Oh, there we go. So 
just really quickly, this is now the difference what we have between physical education and physical activity. Again, guys, I'm just kind of building up the, the outline of this. So for, for PE, for physical education, it's curriculum-based. There's a minimum of two hours per week that we're meant to schedule in for that. That can be quite time-consuming if we're doing it in two one-hour two one blocks. So is, are there other ways we can implement this? So can we do it in the classroom? Simple game of throwing and catching. Not that we don't want to waste paper, but if, for example, if there's scrap paper or anything, can we get the kid children in, in pairs or in groups of three and they're passing a piece of paper around to each other just in the classroom? So we're working on our catching. Because the big thing with PE and the difference between PE and physical activity is PE is skill-based. During PE, you're trying to improve skills. Yes, you will improve physically, their stamina, their fitness, but if you focus on the skill base first, so even in athletics, when you're running, when you're skipping, when you're hopping, when you're jumping, you're teaching the skill of those, not actually the, the byproduct and the benefits is that it's going to increase heart rate. It's going to get them moving. That's fantastic. But teach the skill. What you're doing, looking to do too, is your, your FMS, which you talked about, and then in your sports specific skills. So it's a clear pathway. Britain, somebody mentioned this before, it is an amazing opportunity for team building an individual. So pushing yourself individually, testing your skills individually and testing them in a team environment. How do you work in a team environment? Technically, tactically as well. Improve confidence and competency. And essentially, it could be the first taste of developing a love of sport for young children. So you could be doing gymnastics, you could be doing athletics, you could be in your games, you could be focusing more on key stage two towards badminton or basketball or something maybe they may not even um, get an opportunity to play that could develop a love for that sport for you as PE teachers and teachers in general when you are covering a subject if it is a unique to gymnastics or athletics or anything my first bit of advice would be find out where your local club is because if you notice that and again you don't have to be skilled in any of these areas but you will see they're very good when it comes to hand-eye coordination when they're playing badminton They've constantly hit it. Where is a local badminton club or where is a local tennis club? Because they could be good at racket sports or hand-eye coordination, golf, for example. So, you know, do they work well as a team individually? Could they go and um, promote a different or play a different sport? So what you're doing is you're planting a seed. If you've seen something, go to the parent, maybe with a solution. I think your child is excellent at this through what we've done. Possibly maybe think about sending them here. These are the dates and times that it's on. The difference then with physical activity is every day children should get, young children should get uh, 60 minutes of vigorous to moderate activity every day. Essentially what that means is 60 minutes where they're going at a pace where they find it difficult to talk. Okay, so they can't hold the conversation without <gasps> taking a breath or moving along. So if you're going for a little walk, you may, some children may find that that could be their vigorous activity, but majority will find that quite easy if you start adding in jogging if you start adding in some team games or moves this is where they will start getting very vigorous activity so it doesn't have to be done one block it's incremented throughout the day and unfortunately as we well know children may go home and they may not be physically active at all so you're working roughly 60 percent your maximum heart rate when you do this um it is all about physical development so physical activity is developed their their muscle strength their bone strength their their skin health um, all of this that happens, their organs, their heart, their lungs, all develop through physical activity. Again, it can be done with team building individually. It does improve confidence and their self-esteem and also uh, develop just a love of physical activity, a love of getting out there and running, being with friends, you know, jumping on a bike. This is all the areas that we're kind of looking at as well into. Just a wee bit of research that was done as well too. So we talked about um, to get the release for academic performance was working at 60% of maximum heart rate. So release of the BDNF, uh, the protein in the brain. It can last up for 32, um, or sorry, two to four hours per day. So predominantly being physically active in the, in the morning is probably one of the best things you could do. Now, the research also says when you combine that with a complex skill, so i.e. if you're doing PE and it's physically active PE, that can actually release more BDNF in the brain. So if you were able to schedule PE at the start of the day, that could have a positive effect on how children um, perform in class throughout the day. So that's something also to be mindful of. Big thing is anything I'm speaking about here, guys, every day is great, but starting is also great. 
just once you maybe change one small change into getting another physically active or picking your pee at the start of the day could make a massive difference. Um, this is maybe, again, just to help to make it progressive throughout, but this is somehow you can add it into the school day. So you have movement breaks, you have links with other things. You, we, we have YouTube channel as well too, adding in a bit of sense of free play, new activities, classroom-based. I can send this all on. Um, this is more how we can implement a little bit of physical activity. Um, further benefits, again, it helps with the culture of the school, the mood, behavior, everything as well. So not going to delve too much because I want to get into an overview and understanding of running effective P programs and, and, and essentially make them progressive. And I'll answer some of the questions hopefully on this as well too. So this is, is an example of how we progress dance in, in schools. So what we have done here, if you look across the top from week one to week six, okay, across the top, week one, we always do an intro. So it's an introduction at each of the year groups. Week two in the Northern Ireland curriculum, one of the main areas is body actions. Uh, one of the other areas is space. Another area is dynamics, composition. And then we finish with a little showcase. So we talk about team building and working together. This is a great way to do this. Now, in here in the left-hand side, we've went in simple, simple things. Now, when we're looking at dance, this is where we keep it really simple. So things we need to look at is everything's done in an 8, 16, or 32 beats. So for example, in primary one, we do eight beats to wheels in the bus. So if you listen to wheels in the bus and you clap your hands, it'll be the wheels on the bus go round, down, round. So you count out to eight and listen then to the music. That's about an introduction to dance as you want for children. So again, it's skill-based. It's getting rhythm, time, and tempo. Then we go to P2s, so there's different tempo. So can you go fast and slow for eight beats? Then in P3s, or for P3, you're looking at different levels. How do you get from high, medium, and low? P4 is partner work, P6 using tempo, um, uh, different routines, etc. So that's an introduction just to write each level. And then what you'll do is your body actions. Now, throughout all of this here on here, some of these are routines and some of these will be things like circuits. So we're setting up circuits where the children move and listen to the music because in the circuit, they're maybe going through different levels. So maybe they're crawling uh, slowly to the music down nice and low. Maybe they're jumping onto a bench and walking across in a high level, down nice and low. So what you're trying to do is make it fun, make it engaging, and trying to hit the curriculum. Now with composite classes, some of the things that we have done, so we would go into schools and work with a lot of composite classes, it's testing these out as well too within it. What you will find is you can quickly progress from all of these. So for example, P1 and P2 are very similar. So what you can do there is you can do your wheels in the bus for an eight count, but also add in tempo. All right, so the, it, it's all there. You're looking at levels and partner work for P3 and P4. So you can nearly mirror up most of these and combine in these lesson plans. So this is, um, I can send this out to these guys as well too. So this is just an overview that, that we have done. Another overview that we have done is for games. So we've taken everything in the national curriculum here on the left-hand side. So spatial awareness, handling, kicking, dribbling, striking. And what we have done, working from uh, primary one to primary seven, how do we improve the areas of this? So let's take kicking, for example. So start off a really basic, okay? So stick kicking, how do we do it for primary one? First of all, the ball stationary. So it doesn't move. It's maybe stuck on a spot. The, the ball or a balloon, is it's large, so you're trying to um, increase the chance of them striking that ball. Then you move to P2, so you're trying to hit a target. So you have to try and hit it through a, a gate. Again, you can make that quite large. P3, they're actually kicking now for distance and accuracy. P4, they're kicking a moving target. P5, they're kicking maybe different size and objects for distance and accuracy. And then P6 and P7, you're implementing the skill of kicking into a game. Now you take that same concept and you progress that through everything. So for handling and catching, for example, starting off, one of the biggest processes for, for handling and catching is start off with a bib or a scarf. So an implement that you can throw up and if you catch, it's going to take time to come down. You might also add in a balloon. After that, you can go to a beanbag. It's still got a surface area, 
it's going to take time to fall or you use a large ball. Then if you want to increase the difficulty, you work on things like a tennis ball or smaller things to catch, or you can be reactive. Throw it off a wall, can they catch? Throwing it from a partner, can they catch? And this is a simple progression the whole way through right up. You know, you can get them from when they're sitting down nice and low on the ground. Then when they've done all of that and they've moved into pairs and the threes and the fours catching, you can focus on dodgeball, but focus on the catch. You can do netball, handball, etc. So hopefully that makes sense of, of, of again of how you can progress it. Now, in a composite class, you can, and I'll show you in the next one how we use the step principle, that you could have some of your some of um, the children, for example, if you're primary one, they're using bibs and they can keep on that maybe all session, but you start maybe the P2s and threes are excelling on that. So instead of using bibs to throw and catch, they're still throwing and catching, but now they're using a football. Now they're using a tennis ball or they're using a beanbag instead because they will get the reward. They may find that the bean that the bib is too easy that they think, well, I need to be challenged. So we add on a beanbag. Then the challenge starts to come. Now you can try the P1s and you'd be surprised of how, how quickly they will progress as well. Try them with a bib or sorry, a beanbag or a ball. And if they're still struggling, go back to the bib. So this is where we can start adding in our, our composite classes by changing the object by changing the space that we're doing or the task. And I'll show you that this amazing principle, really simple, you may already know it, but this will help regress or progress any lesson plan for an individual or, or a group. So that is your, your and a progressive overview. And guys, I am I don't mind, I can share this with you if anybody like to share that. We have the same too for gymnastics and athletics. So in gymnastics, we would focus on the foundation movements. So your tuck, your pike, your straddle, your front support, back support, et cetera. Again, reach out and I am happy to, to share that and how you can do that. So this is only, again, I, I respectful your time. I'm not going to take up too much. And if you would like to delve in more, this is what I'm here for. Let's start off a conversation and we can get into it as well. So um, when you are doing any PE program, trying to progress it along, use less things. Keep it simple. Keep it straightforward. Step one, let the kids be the teacher. So if you want to progress your lesson as well as you're going along, let the kids be the teacher. Ask questions. Can anybody try and throw in a different way? Who can catch it with a different part of their body? Can anybody now, can we do this a different way? We haven't moved yet. So what ways could we move and throw and catch? Can anybody go backwards? Brilliant. Can anybody go forwards? So you're giving ownership to the kids. You're asking them loads of questions and they're exploring the whole time. Step two, there is no need for lots of equipment to run the Northern Ireland curriculum. You need basics, you need bibs, hula hoops, bean bags, cones, footballs, and then if you have any rackets. You will then even, even mats, if you have mats, fantastic. If you don't have mats, you can still run a full gymnastics program for mats. If you'd like to know more about gymnastics as well, check out our YouTube channel where we've done a full webinar only on gymnastics and it has loads of videos and ideas. So you can check that out too on our YouTube channel. Don't overcomplicate simple games. So keep them nice and simple, but use this next process that I will show you as well too in the step principle for that. What we do for our lesson plans, and this is how you can then use the same template and progress it throughout each of the year groups. First of all, when they come in, play an instant game. Second of all, explore the skills. So an instant game, for example, might be a tag game. So we're playing tag. Okay, now I'll show you again how we can uh, make that easier or harder as we go along. The next one then, you let them explore the skills. So if it's throwing and catching, give them a bib. Again, like I said, who can throw it different ways? What does they start throwing on their legs or start throwing it backwards? They're exploring the skill. Then, for example, if the, the skill was an underarm throw, we teach the skill or get a child who's really good at it to show everybody in the class. Again, you can take a back step and let the children be the teachers. Then you play a game that's related to the skill and finish off with a cool down or a review. So that's just a simple thing. And this is potentially how a lesson plan might look. So this was a running one for athletics. So we would play foxes and rabbits. So children would line, um, would put the, you've all probably played it, put the bib in the back, children would run after them and have to pull the bib out. Then we would do sprint relays where we would get children to run from one end to the other. And we would tell them, okay, who can run now without using their arms? Can anybody run sideways? Who can think of the fastest way to run? 
and they'll come up with ways of going. You can ask questions. Was it easier to run with or without our hands? Was it easier if we kept our knees low or our knees high? Those simple things. And they'll start to feel that in their own body. Then you go to your start stop. So this one here is brilliant where you run up and you start and you stop. So you're stopping in a running position and then you go again. And then what we do then, we play a game called pizza tag. We have this simple game. We have two chefs in the middle who are the catchers and you give children along the line, say three different types of pizza toppings. So pepperoni, uh, chicken, uh, salami, whatever it may be. You call out pepperoni. All the pepperoni ones have to run straight and not get caught by the chefs. So this is all done through fun games, through through fun ideas. But the children, the main objective here is running. So they're running, they're moving around, they're doing all the games that are linked into it. So that gives you gives you an idea. Now, this is I've mentioned this a few times. I will. We can help. We can help you with. Things like about um oh, sorry excuse me I need to pull on this plug because I just seen that the the things about to die there um apologies apologies um we can help you with things like your lesson plans and schemes of work and sitting down and that's we're not going to cover that in a forty five minute session if you do need any more help and support we can reach out but this is to help you right now in your lessons follow this simple principle so if you're, this is brilliant for composite classes if you would like to change any lesson or any game for an individual or group, think this. So for example, if we are playing foxes and rabbits, so to visualize this for everybody, foxes and rabbits, you get the bib, they put it down their back, that's their tail. And with the fox, they're the rabbits, they have to run around and the foxes have to have to try and catch them. Now, if we're playing in the competition class and for example, we have a P2 who's a catcher, but we have some P4s who are really quick. How we can make it easier for the catcher is we change the space. So they have to run in a smaller space. Now, what that's going to do is going to increase the chance for the P2 to catch the bib, but it also increases the skill, agility, the movement that a P4 has to use. They just can't use the space and run as quick as they can because they're going to be quicker. They have to be more agile. What you can do, you can put on a timer. So if then the P4 becomes a catcher and they're going after P2s, you maybe give them a time. They're only allowed 15 seconds and then they have to balance for three seconds before they run again. Or they balance for 10 seconds, whatever it is. You can change the task. Instead, when the P4 is a catcher this time, they have to hop instead of running. So the P2 can run, but the P4, the catcher, has to hop. So you're changing the task as well for them. You could change the equipment. So for example, the if the P2, they could use, they could be able to um, use a scarf instead of a bib and they'd be able to tuck it in a bit more. And you can make and change the people. So if it is the P2s, you maybe have uh, four P2 catchers, but when it's the P4s, you only have two catchers. So you're making that a bit easier. So this is maybe how you can, in a composite class, do the same similar lesson with the same outcomes, except then just change, change all that. So hopefully that, that makes a little bit um, of sense and help. Um, these are just a few things about when delivering PE, about just being child-centered, giving them positive experience and letting them explore. And then um, don't be, you don't have to be there to, 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 uh, to, to say to them, you know, you need to go this way, stand here, or do there. Give them loads of opportunity to try to 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 explore onto that. Um, so th those are a few things there. Maybe another one thing here in this one is don't keep your PE sessions too structured. This is a brilliant opportunity for you to have a little bit of more organized chaos. So what I mean is try and stay away from keeping them in lines. A plus. Don't have more than two or three people waiting in a line. What that's going to do is going to give them opportunities. So say, for example, we are throwing a beanbag into a hula hoop. Brilliant skill for teaching underarm throw. Instead of just having four hula hoops, <clears throat> have 10 hula hoops with two children behind each, each cone rather than having four hula hoops with five children behind each cone. You're going to increase um, the amount of times that they can actually throw. Plus, as well, you cut out um, children kicking each other, maybe in in that as well too, waiting in the line, getting out, um, just because they want to be stimulated. Simple game for this. This is another idea, and you can try this one out. And this is it'll help too for for composite classes because you can challenge people to go further. Start off with your hula hoop, 
in front of the child. Okay, so maybe you might have two two behind. First person has a beanbag. Once they throw it into a hula hoop, what they can do if they land the hula hoop, they gently just flip it over. So they're moving it forward. So the next person then is throwing a little bit further. When they land in, they flip it over. If they miss, they keep the hula hoop where it is. The idea being if you're starting one end of the hall, by the time they keep flipping, flipping the hula hoop, it comes the whole way down. So then you're starting to ask questions. What throw was better to get it in? Was it an underarm throw or an overarm throw? Let's try it again. Now this time, let's use a different throw. If it's easier for some of the, um, uh, for the, the maybe children in your class who in the comments class or your um, higher year group, change the implement. Can they have to land now a tennis ball? So they have to bounce it to land it in. Maybe they have to be in the hoop to catch it and receive it. Can they catch a small ball? Can they catch, you know, you have your tall cones, hold the tall cone, and they have to try and catch it inside the cone. With the other ones, younger ones, maybe still catching the bib. So there's loads of ways how you can still do the same themes, but think of the step principle. That will change a lot. So it's a brilliant environment too for children to, to, to learn to feel and, and make it progressive throughout. So um, just to show you this, guys, um, again, on this, some of you may, may have come across this. This is our P and Wellbeing portal as well, too. So this is Welcome more ideas for kids for you guys P as well. and Wellbeing portal. This portal has everything that you need to run an effective PE program in your school, as well as looking after the well-being of each child. In the PE and movement section, we have lesson plans from nursery right through to primary seven. They cover the full curriculum for a full year and more. You simply click on the year group you're working with, select any of the programs from dance, gymnastics, games, athletics, download a lesson plan, and each lesson plan will have hyperlinks for every game that you deliver in the PE session. In addition to this, we have follow along PE lessons for foundation, key stage one, and key stage two, covering all areas of the PE curriculum. You select the video that you would want to display for the kids, either in the classroom or in the gym hall on a screen, and the kids follow along. Our movement breaks are brilliant for activating the brain if the children have been sitting around for a long time or even after a rainy break. Included is our fun fitness workouts, which really get the heart rate up and teach the importance of developing strong foundations. Our cardio drumming is a fantastic and fun way of increasing the heart rate, but also working on rhythm, coordination and timing. And if you would like to make your own lesson plan, simply search our games library and choose whatever key action program. It's a 10 week yeah. course, which is delivered. By I just, I'm just conscious of time because I want to uh, kind of wrap this up, but that is just an idea of what we can offer Welcome. with our, um, with our wellbeing, our P and wellbeing program. I didn't even go into the wellbeing section, but everything you need to run a progressive P program is all there. So everything I've talked about, all the lesson plans, all this, this scheme of work, everything is there for you guys to do. And they're all video linked. Now, that's one investment. And actually, we have that on sale. And I'll show you the prices now here at the end. Um, So a huge investment for your for your school to run P, um, like with very little time and effort needed. So to kind of conclude here, just to, just a few slides left is, you, what you're looking to do is, is develop um, a whole vision for P to make it progressive. Treat it as a whole school with cross curricular link, maybe differentiate between the difference between physical activity and PE. So, for example, the daily mind is not PE, but it is physical activity. And we can make it better even by um, making it the daily time, which I've, I've talked about plenty uh, a few times there, rather than getting them to run a mile, getting them to run in a certain time zone. So, for example, you may get them out and have to run around the playground in four minutes. How far can they get? So many times can they go around the playground in four minutes? You might mark out different markers and might help with um, cross curricular link with, with numeracy that all they have to do the next time is beat that distance. And you, so they beat the distance they got in four minutes. So it's saving you time, but gives children a, a marker to go and do. Um, teachers are on the train and they lack confidence and competency. We can help with that as well too. Teachers are time poor, so how do we kind of help with that? Again, the likes of the portal, we can help and invest in, in time, finances and stuff. Hopefully with the government, we can go back in. So those are a few things that, that are maybe lacking. 
what we can actually do as well is, is take action, have a vision day with, with your PE coordinator, your whole group. Where is it you actually want to go with PE? What are the main uh, things that we're doing at the minute? Um, one other thing is, is working with local sports groups. So how can you use the skills for them? So for example, if you're looking at kicking, link in the local sports club and say, look, you guys are focusing on football. How would you run a kicking program or how do you progress kicking from somebody who's four to somebody who is 11? What skills do you do? So simply send out an email and they may already have lesson plans there for you as well to, to, to follow. Even as well as that, some of your most skilled people might even be some of your parents. So these parents might actually be involved in these local clubs and they may be able to help you. Maybe come in, volunteer. So don't be afraid to reach out to them as well too. Use of ICT as well. Um, for example, in our portal, we do we do that. But YouTube, once you have that vision, once you have that outline, can you then just start going for yourself to, to do that? We have an assessment tool on the portal and it can, it can help. But again, I'll not go too much into that. Uh, investment of time, everything uh, we use as well too, because PE and physical activity can be quite stimulating. So how can we use the zones of regulation or how can we bring children back down so they're able to focus and study? So again, in the portal, we have a few of those mindfulness and movement breaks and in that. Employing PE specialists to come into the school, um, work with your local councils. Um, a lot of schools or a lot of PTAs, especially are charity based. So working in with those to get government grants and funding to, to come in and deliver PE training, for example. Um, and engage fully with external partners, the likes of yourself or other people who are local to you to, to take lessons, video those lessons, ask them questions. After this webinar, you know, don't be afraid to reach out and I'll point you in the right direction and give you a few resources as well too that may help with, with all of that. So um, other thing as well too that, that we do, and this is just what we did um, last month, I think it was in a school in Belfast. This is just a short video on the PE training and just to see if this is something that may be of interest even to your thing. Honestly, I think it's helped us develop and our confidence and everything. But it was really interesting today, even just how much you highlighted the importance of PE and movement, especially with young children who are in infant school. So for young children, that movement is so important. A lot of people have lost confidence in PE and I think you've made everything so accessible and we are ready to go. One of the things that sort of stuck with me is not the overthinking of it and letting the children lead. Um, and certainly in a play-based environment, that's where you're coming from. The children are very much leading a lot of their learning. And I could see today, you know, with a lot of those PE activities, that letting the children build their own games into it. And, and it, that just evokes so much fun for the kids. I think the portal is really easy to use. I think it's got everything that you need, everything that we could possibly need or have to take off ourselves for individuals or whole groups of children. It's all there and very easily accessed. I really liked all of the extras, the movement breaks and the mindful stuff. And I think it was amazing for our staff today to get that refresher. You know, after a few years, you go stagnant without sort of the input from somebody outside. So it was lovely to have you in today. Um, really, really worthwhile. We laughed a lot. We've had a really good time as a staff, and I think that that's been really, really important to for for us as a team building exercise. It's been just a really fun morning. So again, guys, that is just again some of the other stuff that that we can offer to kind of to help too as well with uh with the development of 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 PE and, and different things within yourself. So we have the PE portal, we have the staff training, we have webinars. This was only a snippet and hopefully even if you took away one thing to help you to, to run a progressive um, PE program, if you want us to come in or you like more information, please do reach out. And what I, if we just go on to the chat um, on here and if you want to fill out that little form, it's just a wee feedback form so we can we can keep improving. Um, I know I didn't really cover probably the... Uh, hopefully you got some ideas, but the gymnastics, the foundation of gymnastics as well, I can maybe find this on on here for, for ourselves. Oh, sorry, this is as well too, whenever you're on there, this is um what the portal will actually cost for schools as well. There is a discount. So anybody who's previously on this portal and is with us, there is there's a, a discount as well for the discount for you guys. But for new customers, we do have a, a sale on. So that's what the portal costs 
per school is based on number of teachers in the school. So there is a um, 15% discount for new schools coming on and that's only until the end of April. So that's just a wee spring sale that we have on. But happy to work with these guys. You get free training on the portal as well. I will guide the teachers through it, taking you through everything that's there. So very, very worthwhile investment for, for the whole school. So if you, even on that chat again, guys, if you wanted to fill out that feedback form, I'll be sending it on. But again, just for yourselves, Keep jumping on the webinars like this. I know it was a really, really short one. Hopefully you took something from it. Um, even if it gives you the confidence to reach out to myself, um, we've made that connection. Fantastic. I'm happy to help. Uh, don't be afraid to try anything out. Don't be afraid to fail and keep thinking outside the box, really. What what really interests you on yours. So has anybody any questions on that? If you want me to cover something now, um, let me know. Put it into the chat box and and I and I'll I'll cover it now. You, I know some people had said about the the gymnastics as well. So if you wanted to to say under that, I can maybe show you our progressive overview for gymnastics. I think I should have it up here, and uh, should be very easily shared with you guys. Um, so we have in gymnastics, we actually have these two here. So I will share this if anybody's still on, um, who wants to know a little bit about word gymnastics. This is what we do for um this is just the overview of gymnastics for for um a foundation we take a foundational approach so these on the left hand side these are the main areas of uh movements in gymnastics the foundation movements so before you even do a front row before you do any sort of balancing or apparatus we want to give children the confidence in the tuck the pike the straddle the dish and arch the front support and the sequencing look up these guys but again in our lesson plans we have all these videos we have all of it there for you guys to go along how you then can um keep that composite is use those ones on the left hand side for example let's take tuck so to make it harder we can do a tuck balance so essentially a tuck is when children are sitting on their bum with their heel or close to to their bum they're on the floor to balance they lift one leg up can they do that can they lift both legs up can they put both hands out to the side to make it harder then, rocking back and forth in your tuck. So your knees are tucked in, you're rocking back and forth, trying to keep that momentum. And then to add that, to make it even more progressive, you can do a tuck balance on an apparatus. So for example, on a bench, children must sit on a bench and balance in the tuck shape. Then they can move maybe on to their pike or the straddle where they're getting the legs out straight. So what we have, these are, these are just the outline. These are the learning plan and the learning objective to do this. But we turn this into instant games fun games and how we also have in our lesson plan circuits that relate to this and they're all age group specific so um again guys i'm happy to sit down with anybody you can reach out to me by email fill out the feedback form that's just an idea and then even if i show you here now on this this would be then our overview of gymnastics this is what we do even sorry for athletics so these are the areas so these are three main areas in athletics and all of these. So essentially in the portal, these are the learning objectives and then we connect the lesson plans to those. So these are all your learning objectives um, on, on each of the key stage and how we can improve that through there. And then finally, the other one then too that we have, um, I just get transfer of weight. I think this might be it here. This is the, uh, like a, a full on gymnastics program. So after you've done the foundation of gymnastics, you can then implement into this. We're using apparatus, using balancing, sequencing, transfer of weight, using rolling, and even using implement like the vault. So it's all there, guys. It's all there to help support you, especially PE coordinators. If you're thinking, where do I start? What do I do? We want to take away that pain for you guys so you can actually improve your delivery of PE to improve children's love of physical activity and movement so that they can be happy and healthy for the rest of their life. If you're stuck behind a screen trying to develop all of this, getting frustrated, not sure where you're going and the guidelines like that, that's what we're here to support. We would rather than you be able to deliver a high quality, effective, progressive PE program with our help and support. So that is everything from me, guys. Um, I think, I don't know if anybody did put it in the chat. So if anybody had anything um, else to add or to say, that is, is us, guys. If you want to fill out that little that little form on that webinar form would be fantastic. And uh, just thank you for joining. Thank you for, for your time. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, 
very hard, I suppose, to to run through um, everything. But please reach out if you need anything else or further assistance. So thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, guys. Um, for everybody else who has joined in, and I shall uh, see you all soon. Thank you. Cheerio. Bye bye.